Okay, it is seven o'clock. So hello, everyone. And thank you so much for joining me today for our webinar with the topic of building for the future, smart solutions for construction and building monitoring. My name is Amber and I am the North American Sales Director for Move Solutions and I will be your host and guide today for this very exciting topic. So for everyone that is new to the webinars and may not have a background on Move Solutions, so we are a company that designs and manufactures structural health monitoring sensors. We have a completely wireless system that is both static and dynamic, and it makes it excellent in cases of construction monitoring, uh, both on the construction site and surrounding areas to construction sites. So the overview of the webinar today. So first we'll be talking about monitoring practices and the advantages of having a wireless system uh, with real-time monitoring over traditional systems for uh, older styles of monitoring. We'll also get into the technology, so understanding the sensors that we commonly use, uh, the data collection and storage, and the analysis tools that we have. Then we'll talk about the application. So the two main applications are construction sites and surrounding structures to construction sites with a big focus on building monitoring. And then finally, we have a couple of case studies. Uh, so we'll go through the different projects from two different parts of the world. And we'll talk about the projects themselves, the planning and preparation and the ongoing monitoring and improvement with those projects. So the first part is talking about why monitor a construction site. So these are the most common reasons that we have customers coming to us uh, in terms of monitoring. So the first is the safety of occupants. So whether you're talking about the actual construction site and you want to ensure that the workers and people that are on the construction site are safe and there are going to be no structural failures on this site. So if you're talking about retaining walls or shoring piles, in those cases, uh, it's quite common to monitor the actual construction site to ensure the safety of the workers. And also it's really important to monitor surrounding structures, depending on the area, depending on, you may have neighboring buildings that are occupied by tenants or businesses. And so you want to ensure that your construction activities are not affecting those people. So if it's in terms of uh, structural damage and you're trying to prevent a structural failure, or even just monitoring the noise and dust to ensure that you're not affecting the community around your site. Next, and right now I would say this is definitely the most common reason we see is complying with regulations. So I'm in North America and we have many regulations in place, but I know that there are regulations all over the world. And so it depends place to place, even from state to state or city to city, even community based and depending on what you're doing. But most of the time there's some sort of regulation in place that is causing you to need to monitor. So whether you need to monitor the vibration, the movement of surrounding structures, the noise, the dust, as I mentioned, there's some sort of regulation and it will tell you what you need to monitor for and the specifications that you need to meet to do that monitoring. Third is reducing liability. So we're seeing a big push on either asset owners or construction companies that want to have the data av available to show that they did not affect either the construction site, if you're doing building work or working on some sort of asset, they want the data to show that they followed, you know, regulations and standards in terms of vibration monitoring, in terms of movement, and they want that data and evidence to show that in the future, if something comes back, if there's a neighboring building that says, well, you caused foundation damage, they have 
the data to show that they followed the regulations the entire time. There was no movement. The vibrations have never exceeded a certain threshold that could have caused damage. And so it gives them something to show in the future and prove that they did not cause damages. Fourth is informing future construction planning. So something interesting by monitoring certain areas is that in the future, you already have information about that area. So whether you were monitoring certain soil parameters, if you're monitoring certain parameters of historical buildings or older buildings, something in a community that maybe you find does not respond well to certain types of construction, that's information that you can provide to the community and even to yourself. So going in the future, you can already have an understanding of certain things that you need to do based off of the data that you collected at a certain point in time. And finally, enhancing the reputation. We live in a world that we love advanced technology. We love having the newest technology and the newest things. And so being a company that adopts new technology and has you know, a smart construction site is something that can really enhance your reputation for the surrounding communities, for the asset owners, things like that. So why move solutions? Why use move solution sensors, but also why use a wireless system? So the first reason is that our sensors are both static and dynamic and they're wireless battery powered in their real time. So when you're talking about a construction site, they're typically very complex sites to monitor. There are so many moving parts, so many regulations to follow, so many worries about structural failures and things going wrong. And so typically you have different types of systems from different manufacturers, different technologies, and it's something that you have to bring together. So whether you're doing manual surveys for movement of the construction site itself, maybe you're looking at the shoring piles or you're doing manual surveys of surrounding buildings, but you also need to do vibration monitoring. So maybe you have a certain vibration monitor in place, but you also need to do the noise and dust monitoring. So you have another piece of equipment from a different manufacturer in place. And things, having different manufacturers and different systems become very expensive because you have to have more manpower to understand the data and you may have different platforms that you're paying for and having more people trying to gather the information and understand where there's problems, if there's changes in the sites, and you're looking at many different moving parts. Having a system that you can do the movement, you can do the vibration monitoring, you can connect an endless amount of third-party probes into the system. It gives you one system that you can use our software. You can also use third-party softwares and integrate all of the data. But we also, we've worked very hard on having a very user-friendly platform with specific tools and algorithms to make the monitoring as easy as possible. So what we're doing is we're taking one system, we're looking at all of the different parameters and giving one easy to understand platform where you can set the alarms and thresholds. So that way, if there's a change, you're going to know there's a change. And so it keeps the costs a lot lower because you're not using a bunch of different systems and using different platforms. You have one place to look. The actual sensors to talk about that we use most commonly uh, in construction monitoring are, of course, the tilt meter. So this is our static sensor. This is monitoring the angle of inclination. So this is looking at changes in the, the movement, so the static changes. This is commonly used you know, on construction sites if you're monitoring retaining walls, shoring piles, and then on surrounding structures. So if you have a construction site close by buildings or tunnels, whatever the case may be, the tilt meter is commonly used. And it can you can use the tilt meter uh, to have a 24 seven real-time monitoring of the movement of structures. Typically surveying is still involved, but instead of having a surveyor come out you know, every day, every other day, every week, 
You can use a system that's real time and understand changes in the short term. You can still have surveyors come out, uh, but you can definitely decrease the amount. And it saves in costs to have less surveying. Uh, it also gives you real-time data. So if there are changes, it increases the safety because you're able to make short-term decisions and understand what is affecting the construction site while you're doing the construction site. Uh, instead of waiting for the surveyor to come out, you see there's a change, but you don't actually know what caused the change. Next, we have the vibrometer. So this is a PPV vibrometer. So this is monitoring the peak particle velocity. So typically in construction, if there's vibration monitoring, you're monitoring the peak particle velocity. We do have different regulations uh, preset in here for North America, well, actually globally, we have some different standards that are preset. And you can also set these in custom mode as well. Next, we have the accelerometer. So this one is commonly used as well. It's used on threshold setting so that if there is a peak in the acceleration that exceeds a certain threshold, you're alerted to that in the short term. And also something interesting with this is performing the modal analysis. So looking at the natural frequencies of structures. So this is most commonly used in surrounding structures. So if you wanna get a baseline of the natural frequencies of surrounding structures to compare it before and after construction to ensure that you have not changed the structure in any way. This is a great sensor to do that with. Finally, we have the analog node, which is a basically a wireless data logger. So what you do with this is you connect all of the third-party probes. So as I mentioned before, noise sensors, dust sensors, strain gauges, crack meters, um, different sensors for soil, groundwater sensors, things like that, that are typically wired. You can connect into the node. They become wireless and battery powered and then connect all of that information into the system with the other sensors. And how they communicate. So they are wireless sensors, as I mentioned before. So they're wireless and battery powered and they communicate through a LoRaWAN gateway. So LoRaWAN is a very low power wide area network system. So you get a great range from the sensors to the gateway. And that's how it's sending the data to the cloud platform. So as I mentioned, we have our own cloud platform with all of the tools where you can set the alarms and thresholds and view the data. But if you have your own platform uh, or you use a third party software, you can also integrate the data into a third party platform as well. So we have the APIs, the MQTTs and the FTP connectors. So that way you can integrate the data if you already have your own platform. So you're not married to ours. And with that, you can also use all of, all of our tools and special algorithms that we have to process the data. So here's a good example of one of the tools that we have. So we have a lot of analysis tools on the platform. This one is an example of the overlay function that we have for our tilt meters. And this is something that's really nice in construction sites because you can select, I believe up to 20 tilt meters and you can overlay them on top of each other. So you can see the trends and differences between the tilt meters. The tilt meters are also synchronized, which is really nice because you can take synchronized samplings at the same time. So say you're monitoring shoring piles on a construction site, you can synchronize those tilt meters, take the samplings at the same time, and then overlay those samplings so you can see the difference in each of the tilt meters. So going into real world applications, which I know this is an illustration, but we're going to pretend this is a real construction site. So this would be an example of monitoring the actual construction site. So if you look at the actual construction site with the retaining walls and the tunnel going through, so this would be an example of, you could use them two separate ways. So you're building a tunnel through a city, maybe this is a metro, a shallow metro, so they have to build the retaining walls and have the, the bar, the support bars, or it could be, you know, a foundation for a big building that they're building in a downtown area, whatever the case may be. 
So a good example would be to, in this case, you would monitor the retaining walls. It's a very common way that we monitor construction sites. I would say one of the most common is monitoring retaining walls or shoring piles uh, with tilt meters. So with the tilt meters, you're statically monitoring them. It's, it's really nice because you have the 24 seven monitoring. It's something, as you know, if there's a structural failure, it's usually in that area. And so you're monitoring it in real time. So if there are changes, you're able to see that. And you can also see different trends. So I know a problem that I hear all the time is, you know, when serving shoring piles, if you have big changes in the temperature, you may see changes, you know, in movements in the shoring piles based on the surveys because the temperature has changed and there's, you know, thermal expansion, whatever the case may be. So, and that's something that you don't directly know because you're not constantly monitoring the temperature. So something nice about our sensors is that there's also temperature sensors. So in the case where you have thermal expansion or movement because of the weather and drastic changes, you're able to track that rate on the platform. So you know, if there's movement the next day, you can see on the platform it's movement because of the temperature, or you can see it's movement and the temperature is not related. So you know that there's a problem. We would of course use vibrometers to make sure that all of the, the vibrations caused by this construction site is not going to affect all of the surrounding buildings, noise and dust sensors to ensure that the community is not being flooded by noise and dust, and also the groundwater so that if you want to look at the soil integrity from you know, the deep excavation work, you can use uh, third-party probes to monitor the groundwater. Next, we would look at the surrounding structures. So you can either do one, the other, or both. So I would say typically we do one or the other, but I have seen cases of doing both if it's a really large project. And so in this case, you're using the vibrometers and tilt meters and accelerometers on those surrounding buildings. And if you already have cracks or probably maybe you have some large cracks in some surrounding structures, crack meters as well. And so this is going to give you the vibrations. You're going to see how the vibrations are propagating through the buildings and make sure that they're below a certain standard. The movement of the buildings, the static movements with the tilt meters, and then you can track the accelerations and do the modal analysis of the buildings and track those cracks. So getting into the first case study. So this is a case study um, with Schnabel Engineering. Schnabel is a, an expert in geotechnical and vibration monitoring. So this is a really interesting project that we did with them and it's still ongoing. So they still have the sensors in place. They just recently added some to this project. To protect the final customer, I won't be naming the, the final customer and we don't have pictures of the actual structure um, to keep it private. But what is happening is they are building a new building next to a museum storage facility. And so as you can imagine, the contents in the museum storage facility are very valuable and very susceptible to being damaged by high vibrations. And so we worked with them to do the vibration monitoring on this project. So the project was drilling with auger cast piles. So they were drilling the cast piles. There was site grading, soil excavation and compaction, concrete and structural steel placement, drilling geothermal wells and constructing a new water tower. And so with all of this work going on right next to the storage facility, they needed to very closely monitor the vibrations. So here are some pictures from the site. So the sensors were located inside of the building and it's epoxied on the floor. Uh, it's actually like a hard plaster type of epoxy. And something interesting about this project is that inside of the building, so the sensors needed to be inside of the building, but inside of the building, there was no cell service because it's a giant concrete building. And so communication was a really big worry with this project. This is Ben from Schnabel. So he's on the roof with the uh, gateway, which was attached to a solar system. So we put the gateway on the roof. 
and surrounding the building. So it's basically a square with some step ups and the sensors were located uh, along the perimeter of the building. So communication was definitely a worry. Uh, ben went on to say ahead of time to check the communication in all of the different areas and it worked perfectly. So it was a big win. Uh, LoRaWAN communicates so well through buildings. It's It surprises us all sometimes. And so originally they added five of the sensors around the perimeter and then later just recently, I think a month or two ago, as the construction work started to progress, they needed to add more. And something really nice about the system is when you need to add more sensors, you can literally just take them, epoxy them to the floor, and that's it. So they already have the gateway in place. They already have the platform and sensors running. So all you need to do is add a couple sensors to the building. They automatically turn on, they automatically find the gateway, and they automatically start working. So there is no need to configure anything or set anything up. And Schnabel is actually using their own platform for this monitoring as well. So they are using our uh, API integration and using their platform to show the, the final customer, the, the monitoring reports and data. So getting into the actual data, uh, this isn't their data, this is just a stock photo, but this is what the data from a vibrometer would look like. So in this case, they could produce vibrations no higher than three millimeters per second. So these were set on custom mode uh, since it's a very low threshold. So they're on custom mode. So if you can see, if it's not too small, you can see the red line, which is the top. So I think that's three millimeters per second. And you can see the vibrations below that. So if a vibration goes above that, then they're alerted and they receive the alert that the threshold has been surpassed. The next case study is from the UK. So we tried to pick some from some different areas. And this is with one of our technical partners, Academy Geomatics. And so in this case, they were monitoring a metro tunnel and a ventilation tunnel. And they were mon monitoring these tunnels because they were super close to a construction site. So in this case, instead of monitoring the construction site, they're monitoring the tunnels. And so they did this both statically and dynamically. So I'll go through. So as you can see, this is a steel tunnel. I believe it's steel, it's some sort of metal. And so they used the sensors actually connected to magnets and they put them right on the tunnel. So in this case, they're monitoring uh, with tilt meters for the static convergence. And they're also monitoring the vibrations of the tunnel as well to ensure that the vibrations are not exceeding a certain threshold that could cause damage to the tunnel. So as you can see, very long tunnel wouldn't typically be super easy, but the communication worked very well in this tunnel and they were able to get the project done. So here's a picture of them on the magnet. So as you can see, you can use the sensors in a very non-destructive way. So in Schnabel's case with Ben, they epoxy them to the floor. They even put duct tape down first and epoxy them right on top. And in this case, they're using magnets so they can just stick the magnet on the tunnel and take it right back off. And next uh, with Academy Geomatics as well is the static monitoring of the Carlisle house facade. And so this is a really interesting case because they, they basically knocked down the building, but are building a new building inside of the facade of the old building. So it's something really interesting, but they of course needed to closely monitor the facade of the building with knocking the the insides of the building out and building it back in. So it's something that they had to monitor very closely. And so they did a static monitoring with our tilt meters. In this case, they used the tilt meters on tilt beams. And the reason they did this is because as you can see, this is a facade with bricks or concrete blocks. And so instead of looking at each individual block, because say you would put the tilt meter on one of those blocks, but maybe just that block is moving. Uh, and so it's not giving you a good representation of how the actual building is moving. 
And so you can install the tilt meters onto a tilt beam, and that way you're looking at a larger area instead of just each individual brick on the building. So a very interesting project with the tilt beams and tilt meters uh, to monitor facades. Here's a couple more pictures. And that's it for my webinar. Um, we do have a, another webinar coming up. So on May 4th, we have Mark Anderson from our technical partner, Academy Geomatics, with one of our sales managers, Mark Flo, and they will be going into details on this project that I just mentioned. So something really interesting, especially if you're doing construction monitoring and especially building monitoring, this is a beautiful historic building. So something that would be very interesting if this is something that you regularly monitor or want to get into monitoring. So if you want to sign up for the next webinar, here's a QR code and you can sign up to that webinar, which is on May 4th. I'll let it here for a second. I think that Ombra is putting it in the chat as well. So you can just click on the Zoom link. And then finally, if you want to subscribe to our newsletter, that way you can get updates about webinars. Uh, so you can track our webinars that we have. Also, you can learn about new products and see our blog posts, things like that. So if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter, I would definitely recommend it. And that's it. I think we have a couple minutes for some questions. So I will go ahead and I have to escape, I think, because my mouse is not working. Okay, I will answer some questions. So the first question is, what are the differences between static and dynamic monitoring? It's a really good question. So static monitoring is looking at the permanent movements of a structure. So statically, it's something that you're, you're only looking to see if something permanently moved. So, you know, if you're monitoring a shoring pile and that shoring pile has moved two millimeters and you want to know that shoring pile has moved two millimeters because that means that there is a problem because it shouldn't be moving, that's static monitoring. So understanding those permanent changes in a structure. Dynamic monitoring is looking at the vibrations of a structure. So dynamic monitoring is either looking at vibrations caused by construction sites or the vibrations in a structure, which will uh, equate to the natural frequencies of the structure. So dynamic monitoring is just looking at an entirely different parameter, which is something that actually you can derive permanent changes. So in terms of modal analysis and tracking natural frequencies, you can understand permanent changes in a structure, but looking at different, different ways to do so. And, and typically with dynamic monitoring, looking at the vibrations, you can catch those changes much earlier on than just monitoring for those static movements. Do you have a sample photo where a location, oh, the location of a sensor at field during construction activity? I'm sure we do. Um, Amber's on here, so she is in our marketing department, and I'm sure she could definitely find a photo for you on an on an actual construction site um, during construction activity. So I'm sure it's possible. What is the max number of sensors that can be get connected to an analog node? Okay, so that is a so the, we have two analog nodes. Uh, we have a four channel analog node and a single channel analog node. The single channel is our newest one and uh, it's the most commonly used because the single channel has more user interfaces. So it has eight different user interfaces. So that means depending on the third party probe that you're using, it may be vibrating wire, it may be 420 milliamp pair, uh, millivolt over volt. So there's many different types of sensors, um, the way they communicate. And so in that case, you would connect one sensor to one node. So there'd be one node for one sensor. Um, we still have some of the four channels. So if you're looking for a 420 milliamp pair or a millivolt over volt, we do have some four channels. And in that case, you could connect four, sans, four sensors to one node with the four channels. 
So what does Move Solutions bring to the market in comparison with any other monitoring companies out there? So what we bring to the market is having a mix between, well, our products are top notch. Uh, they're very high quality, very accurate. Uh, if you look at the data sheets on the website, we have really great products and we also have a static and dynamic system. So it's kind of what I mentioned earlier. It's really hard to find a system um, that has both wireless, static, and dynamic sensors. You typically, if you want to do static monitoring with tilt meters, you can go to one company. And then if you want to do vibration monitoring, you have to go to another company. And so we have brought all of that together. So it you, you can have one platform, you can have one system and integrate all of those sensors. And on top of that, we have uh, we have very advanced tools and algorithms to process the data on the back end. So you're not uh, receiving a ton of you know raw data that you have to process and figure out what to do with. So we have all of the tools and algorithms, depending on what you're monitoring for, that processes it for you to make it as easy as possible. Can you share a document describing the APIs? Absolutely. If you send us an email, so I would send it to support at movesolutions.it. I'll write that in the chat for you guys. Okay, let me write it. I'll do support at movesolutions.it. Yep. If you email that, then uh, if the support, his name is McKelly, he'll be able to provide the document uh, with, the, with the APIs. How much is the price of your accelerometer and vibrometer sensors? So it depends. Um, we work around the world and we work with distributors and uh, depending on importing and customs and things like that, the price varies. So if you send, I'll, I'll put another email in, in the, uh, in the webinar chat. So if you email info at movesolutions.it, we can connect you with your local person. And then that way we can send you a price list. Oh, I think I have some questions in the webinar chat as well. Okay, I found some more questions. Okay, so one is about the price here, uh, which you just, if you, if you email us, we can connect you. Um, from the market perspective, what kind of entry are you looking at in India? Will it be through local partners? Yes, we we typically always work with uh, local partners. Um, so we we usually work with local distributors and then also uh, local technical partners as well. So and a good example is Academy Geomatics, who is a technical partner of ours. And so they are experts in the system and they can do system integration and installations and monitoring and things like that. For modal analysis, what is the time synchronized value of your accelerometer? It's a good question. I believe it's within 500 microseconds, um, but let me let me double check. Yeah, it's within 500 microseconds between the time synchronization. And I think that's it. I got the questions in the webinar chat. Okay, sounds perfect. So thank you, yeah, I think that's it. So thank you so much to everyone that joined me today. Um, I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something and let me know if you have any projects uh, that you want an idea of how we would monitor and we can tell you the sensors that we would recommend and how we would set it up and we can give you a good example of how to monitor one of your project sites. So thanks again, guys, and you have a great rest of your day.